Hello students, in this video we'll construct the additive inverse of a real number. Let's suppose that alpha is a real number, and we're going to define a number beta. It's a set of all p and q such that there exists r in q r greater than 0 such that negative p minus r is not in the Dedekind cut alpha. And our claim is that this beta is an r and it's the additive inverse of alpha. So our claim is that beta is a real number and that alpha plus beta is the Dedekind cut zero star. So let's systematically do this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to show that this beta is in fact a cut. And so we know that alpha is not alpha is not empty. So we have two things. So alpha not empty implies that there is an alpha in A. There is a little a in alpha. And then, if little a is an alpha, this implies that negative a is not in this set beta. And let's see why. Well, negative a is not in beta because no matter what we add to a, so if we, add, if we subtract anything from negative a, that will be less than a. So a minus r is in alpha for all r. And so that implies that this cannot be in the set, uh, that, that this negative a cannot be in b. So that is why uh, alpha negative a is not in b. And so that says that beta is not the entire set of rational numbers. Since a alpha is not equal to q, this implies that there is a c in q such that c is not an alpha. And what we're going to do is we're going to set p to be negative c minus 1. And then that tells me that c is negative p minus 1. And this allows us to say that this p is automatically in the set b because p, because c, is not in alpha, so this is not in alpha. And so the p that's constructed here is in the set beta. So p is in the set beta, and therefore beta is not the empty set. So that is condition one of our Dedekind cut, is that this beta is not empty, and this beta is not all of q. So these two conditions are the first condition in our cut. Now let's do the next condition in our cut, condition number two. So condition number two, Let's let p be in beta, and this implies there exists an r greater than zero, such that what? Such that p, negative p minus r, is not in alpha. And then if we let q be less than p, this implies that negative q is bigger than negative p, and this implies that negative q minus r is bigger than negative p minus r. And so what do we know? So we now know that this negative q minus r is bigger than p minus r, and p minus r is not an alpha, so q minus r cannot be an alpha. So q minus r is not an alpha. And so the result of this is that q is in beta, hence Q is in beta, and therefore that's property two of cuts. And finally, we go to property three of cuts. Here's property three of cuts. Property three of cuts says that let's let B be in beta, and this implies that there exists an R greater than zero, such that what? Such that negative P minus R is not in alpha. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to define define a number q, 
and Q is going to be P plus R over two. And now this number Q, since R is greater than zero, this number Q is greater than P. And if I do Q minus R over two, so Q minus R over two, negative Q minus R over two, that's the same thing as negative P minus R over two minus R over two, which is negative P minus R, and that's not an alpha. So that tells me that this Q is also not an alpha since R over two is positive. Hence, hence Q is in beta and Q is what? And Q is greater than P. And this establishes that hence, Hence, beta is a real number. And we're almost out of space, so we'll say in the next video, we'll show, now we need to show, that alpha plus beta is a subset of zero star, and that alpha plus beta is contained, that zero star contains Alpha plus beta contains zero star. So once we have these two inclusions, we will deduce that this alpha plus beta is zero star, and that beta will be called negative alpha, the additive inverse of alpha. And we'll do that in the next video. Thank you very much.